Today I slept with another man. Dan Jenkins stopped midway to get a Michael from the refrigerator and looked back at Caroline, his lovely 29-year-old wife. She stood in the doorway between the office and the kitchen. He had just returned home from work and allowed himself one glass of beer, which helped him relax after a hard day spent collecting insurance. He shook his head and looked at her again, wondering what she had actually said. The Freudian error was understandable, given what he had been through for the past two and a half years, including being married to Caroline for a year and a half, and it bothered him that it was still happening. By this time, he should have come to his senses. He forced himself to smile at her. She didn't smile back. Like every day, he thanked God for bringing her into his life. She looked like a Dresden doll come to life. Long blonde hair, rosy cheeks, red lips, and blue eyes. Slim up and down, with just enough curves to make her blouse and pants work outfit look sexy. Not the kind of overt curves that 34-year-old Holly had, but it was good that Caroline in this sense, as in all others, was different from his cheating ex-wife, whom he still prayed every night to die of some kind of, some terrible debilitating disease. Lord, honey, for a minute, I thought you said, I didn't listen. What did you say? She looked at him with such a sad and cold expression that his hand holding the beer trembled. I said that today I slept with another man. Frank Miller from the office. You know, he works in information technology. You met him at a party last month. Big blonde. Dan opened and closed his mouth. He was struck by the stupid thought that he must be like a fish with his mouth opening and closing. The words didn't come out. She didn't move. He didn't even see her breasts moving showing that she was breathing. She could be a real porcelain doll. In case you didn't understand, Dan, I had sex with him. I went to a motel and had fun with him for half a day. What? He carefully placed Michaelob on the kitchen table. A crazy thought occurred to him that he should be careful to wipe it up if it spilled. What you? How are you? Finally, he gained control of his mouth. Don't even dare joke like that, Caroline. How the hell could you? It wouldn't be funny even if it were. If anything, her expression became even sadder, but her words were simply cold, even if your bitch wife Holly hadn't cheated on you with her big boyfriend and kicked you out of the house. Isn't that what you meant, Dan? It hurts, doesn't it? But it happened again. He couldn't breathe. It was impossible. He was sleeping and could wake up at any moment to find Caroline breathing quietly next to him. He would reach out and kiss her and thank God that she had come to save his life after Holly had done everything she could to destroy her. He blinked furiously, trying not to cry from embarrassment. He'd shed enough tears when Holly told him she'd fallen in love with another man and was going to marry him. Only later did he find out that she had been cheating on him for years and had fallen in love with her latest boyfriend. Why are you doing this, Caroline? I do not trust you. You didn't do it. It's not in your nature to be such a bitch. We've only been married a year and a half, but I know you better. She shook her head. Sorry, Dan. This is true. But you haven't asked me why yet. Why did I go to the motel with Frank? Why did I pull down his pants and give him pleasure? Why did I have sex with him? We did this in several poses. Frank loved it and wants to do it again. Dan leaned back on the counter and for a moment felt like the world around him was spinning. He made it to the chair at the kitchen table before he fell. He thought she was joking, but the cold words told him she was telling the truth. Why the hell was that his only thought? Why again? Why me? Finally, he was able to squeeze out the words. Okay, you pathetic bitch, I'll bite you. Why? Why would you do this to someone who loves you? I would give my life for you. Our children love you. They have loved you since we started dating. I understand, Holly. She was pathetic cheating, pathetic, notes. Am I really that bad in bed? For the first time since she spoke, Caroline walked towards him and stopped less than a foot away. She reached out and cupped his face, oddly soothing. No, you're not that bad in bed. I haven't been with many men, but from my own experience, you're damn good. And Frank was no bigger than you, maybe a little wider, but I didn't take a ruler to compare you. Dan, the reason I cheated on you and slept with Frank is because I have to get used to having sex with other men again. 
Even though she spoke English, she could speak Mandarin Chinese, he had absolutely no idea what she was talking about. He covered her hand with his. The feeling of his flesh against hers was the only thing that mattered in this world. What the hell does that mean? I'm filing for divorce, Dan. Today I'm leaving you. I'll pack my things, at least most of them, this evening, and go to my mother. And since we are not going to be together, and since I have to start a new life, I decided that I would sleep with another man. Oh, and I wanted to hurt you as much as possible. And I knew that fucking Frank would hurt you more than anything else I could do. Deja vu was a real thing, he decided. He felt the same as the day he walked into his previous home and Holly, with her large breasts having under her thin blouse, instead of greeting him with a kiss and a chest rub, told him that she had fallen in love with her old boyfriend and wants him to move out that night. She was divorcing him, but even Holly, as much of a bitch as she was, didn't try to hurt him like her loving replacement, whom he married to try to fill the hole Holly left in his heart, did. Now Caroline was tearing out what was left of his heart. And the worst part was that he still didn't know why. He felt a great weariness come over him. It was an attempt to squeeze out words. All he wanted was to go up and collapse. It's good that today was a weekday and the children were with Holly. He knew he should be angry, furious, and wanting to kill the beautiful bitch standing in front of him. But it was as if Holly's first betrayal had stolen all the anger out of him. All he has left is sadness. I think I know the rules. It must have been an old boyfriend you got back together with. Or did you find some new guy and decide you made a mistake marrying a 37-year-old delinquent like me? Who are you in love with now? In you. It was always you. From the very day you came into my office. Until this moment, I never believed in love at first sight. He took her hand and removed it from his face. Let me clarify. You're in love with me? You were in love. And you're going to a motel to have sex and please some guy because you're going to divorce me and you want to hurt me. What is it about this picture that I don't understand? I still love you. I chose Frank to have fun with because every girl at work says he is a stud and a real lover. I felt good being with another man. But although I enjoyed it and enjoyed him enjoying me, he never rang my bell. He couldn't give me pleasure. I couldn't understand it. With you and me, well, you know how it is. I never knew how much good I could feel until I got into bed with you. I thought it would be the same with him, but it wasn't. I had to pretend a couple of times so as not to hurt his feelings. I guess I love you so much that just pushing buttons doesn't work anymore. He stared at her. Something was wrong here. But, she said, I decided it didn't matter. I will have sex with Frank or anyone else over and over again, and eventually I will stop loving you and respond to them the same way I respond to you. Maybe not as wild as I was with you, because I don't think I'll ever love someone the way I loved you again. But I can live my life. He grabbed her small, slender hands in his, and pulled her down until she knelt in front of him and lifted her head slightly to look him in the eyes. Caroline, for God's sake, think about it. I don't understand. How can you love me and tell me that our sex is the best thing you ever had and want to divorce me? I gave you more than a year, Dan. I tried my best, but I can't do it anymore. I can't live with a cheater. He couldn't believe what he was hearing, and he almost wanted to laugh and cry at the same time. She ruined their marriage by sleeping with another guy because she thought he was cheating on her. He wanted to grab her and pound some common sense into that pretty, completely stupid little head. Lord, do you really think that I'm cheating on you? Caroline, I haven't touched another woman since the day we met. I'll admit, I had sex with a couple of women after Holly left me, but it ended the day we met. There was never anyone but you. How could you even think that? Did someone lie to you about me? She removed his hands and stood up. Now she was looking down on him, and even though he knew he was innocent, he felt like a piece of shit under someone else's boot. I didn't say you were sleeping with someone, Dan. You are in love with someone else, and this is the same as cheating. You promised me that you would love and cherish only me, and you lied. You are in love with someone else every minute of our marriage. He had a terrible feeling that he knew where this was going. Caroline was wrong but how could she be made to believe him? 
Nothing like this. She hit him in the face, and the shock alone was enough to send him flying off his chair and onto the floor. Caroline was not the type of woman to slap. A slap in the face with an open palm, behind which stands power. The power of passion. The power of anger. Don't you dare lie to me, Dan. Do me the courtesy of at least being honest with me. You ruined my life. You tricked me into marrying you. You made me fall in love with you. You probably ruined me for the sake of other men. But don't keep laying on top of all the crap you did to me. I don't love her anymore, Caroline. I don't. You have to believe me. No, no. Do you know that you talk in your sleep? No, well, you know. You cried for her, begged her to come back to you. You screamed her fucking name when we made love. You bastard. You know how much it hurt me. How many times have you had sex with me with your eyes closed so you can imagine yourself inside her? She took a deep breath. All my friends, all of them, and my mother, told me not to marry you. They said you were devastated by the divorce and Holly was cheating on you. They told me I was a rebound, that you love her, as evidenced by the fact that you fought like cats and dogs over everything. You were more interested in trying to hurt her than taking care of your own children and living with me. They said you'll either go back to her if she bends your little finger, or you'll realize you don't love me and move on to someone else after you've had time to heal. But I was stupid and told myself that my love could change you, heal you, bring you to me. And I was ready to wait until you stopped loving her. I've been waiting over a year, Dan, but you still talk in your sleep, and I still see your face when they mention her name. Damn it, Caroline, she hurt me worse than anyone. She tore my heart out. She is the mother of my children. Of course I have feelings for her. We were married for over ten years, but I don't love her. You have to believe me. I don't believe it. I've been watching you for a year, Dan. You're a man in love with another woman. I did everything I could, but I lost, and she won. I hope you and her get back together someday because I can't imagine you ever being happy with anyone else. She left the kitchen. He caught her at the entrance to their, what was their bedroom, and grabbed her from behind by the shoulders. You want me to get on my knees and beg? I will. I'll do anything, Caroline. Anything. I should hate you for sleeping with another man. But I forgive you. What do you want? Do you want us to move to another city? Another state? What can I do? She jerked, and he loosened his grip. You can let me go and go. Let me grab my things and get out of here. Our marriage was a mistake. He watched her leave, and all he could say was, Don't go, don't go. After a while, he went down to the office, took a bottle of Dewar, filled a glass, and began to work steadily to get the shit out of him. He heard her leave the front door, but he didn't even try to get up. Now that she was no longer around, he sat in front of the dark television, drinking and crying until the night passed. The next day, he didn't wake up until 11 o'clock in the morning, but since he had his own insurance agency and staff, he didn't have to rush to work. After a while, he decided to screw it all and drove to Jacksonville Beach, about 20 miles from his home in Jacksonville, Florida. He walked out onto the beach, leaving his boots and socks in the car, and watched seagulls fly overhead and a few stubborn northern tourists sunbathe in the cold November air of a fall Florida day. He could try to figure out a way to get out of the box he was in, but he didn't think there was a way out. First, his ten-year marriage collapsed one day when he discovered that he was just a meal ticket for the cheating mother of his two beloved children. He recovered from this fiasco and found another woman he loved, and now she went and had sex with a stranger and was preparing to divorce him for loving his ex-wife, a bitch. How to prove that you don't love, he thought. Would praying for her to die a horrible death every night, even if it could be proven, prove it? He wasn't a psychiatrist, but he was smart enough to realize that the reason he hated Holly so much was because he really loved her. The pain of her betrayal was not as intense as before, but if he thought about it, he felt a heart attack. But he loved Caroline. He knew that too. After all, you can love two women at the same time, right? The next evening, Wednesday, he called Caroline at home, and she said she didn't want to talk to him. He called her at work on Thursday, and she hung up. He drove past her office at closing time and saw her come out with a big blonde guy who must have been Frank, talking to him on the way to his car. But to his relief, 
They didn't touch or kiss, and when he followed her as quietly as he could, she drove straight to her mother's house in a mobile home park on the city's west side. He called her on Friday at work, and she told him to stop calling her. Sorry, baby, but I'm losing my mind. I do not know what to do. I'm losing the woman I love more than anything in this world, whether you believe it or not. Please tell me there is something I can do to stop this. I need you. I'm still angry at you, Dan, I have to tell you. But I came up with something. I'm not going to tell you that I won't file for divorce, but there is something you can do that will make me think about giving us a second chance. Just tell me, whatever it is, I'll do it. I don't know if you'll be so happy when you hear this. I will come to you, to us, tonight. Can we go out to dinner and talk about this? No, this is not a date. I want to talk to you, and then I'll go home. And go out with Frank again? Didn't you have enough the first time? He cursed himself the minute those words left his lips. That wasn't what he wanted to say, but he was so jealous and angry that he couldn't stop. No, I'm going for a walk with my mother and her two friends. They always have dinner on Friday night. And Dan, I won't date Frank anymore. I told him it was just one time and he was fine. I will not date anyone until our divorce is final. I... I shouldn't have done that. I knew it. But I was damn mad at you. I just wanted to hurt you. But it was wrong. There will be no other man until I become a free woman. And even if we get divorced, I will always regret that I did this to you. He dealed Holly's family a number, which he now hated. He forced himself to speak politely to this bitch who had burned his life. I... I'm so sorry, Holly. I know I have to pick up the kids at 6 p.m. for the weekend. But something came up. This is important, otherwise I wouldn't ask. Do you mind if I pick up the kids tomorrow morning? Yes, I object. Bill and I... But no matter. When will you pick them up? How about 9 a.m.? Okay, I'll cook them. Thank you. She hung up without saying another word. After hanging up the phone, he shook his head. Lately, she has been acting almost human. It was strange. In the first year after they broke up, they didn't exchange a single decent word. It was a never-ending struggle to see who could pull the other's chain. Of course, he knew it was mostly his fault. She had their home, their children, and most of their friends. All he had was the pain and embarrassment of being the abandoned idiot who never saw this coming. But in the year since she'd gotten married again to that guy Bill he'd never heard of, she'd almost turned into a decent person. Of course, she disappeared for almost six months. Bill dropped off and picked up children on court-ordered visits. Bill he talked to. For some reason, she avoided him almost completely. However, she was mostly decent now. But despite the changes, he was still as careful with her as with a spitting cobra. Even though Caroline said it wasn't a date, he made spaghetti carbonara from scratch, which she loved. And he bought a nice white Asti because she loved it too. He felt like a high school student getting ready for his first date. He vacuumed the office and polished the kitchen counter. He wanted everything to be as good as possible. If this was the last time he spent time with Caroline in their home, he wanted it to be as good as possible. At exactly seven o'clock in the evening, he heard her 2005 Saturn pull into the driveway. He cooked spaghetti and placed it on the dining table along with wine, good food, and cutlery. He lit two candles at both ends of the room and took a deep breath of the fragrant air and prayed for a miracle. There was a knock on the door, and something he didn't even know was fragile shattered inside him at the sound. A stranger knocked on the door, not like a woman returning to talk to her husband after a short separation. He opened it and reveled in the sight of it. She was dressed in a casual blue pullover against the November chill and white slacks that hugged her tightly. Hello, he said, smiling and peering into her face, trying to understand why she was here. Hello, Dan. She went inside and sniffed the air. Candles and carbonara. You didn't miss anything, did you? He shrugged and grinned. Sorry, but I had to try. Even if it's not a date, could you have a glass of wine and some carbonara? Just two people ate a little and drank a glass of wine. No obligations. The small smile disappeared from her face and she shook her head. No, I won't stay. 
I came here to talk, and then I'm leaving. I really don't think it will do any good, but I have to try. I don't want to divorce you. I don't want to try to forget you. But honestly, I don't think you can do what I ask you to do. Whatever it is, I'll do it. If you give us one chance, if I didn't love you as much as I should have, I will. I will spend the rest of my life catching up on what I lost over the past year. I didn't know I was talking in my sleep, and I swear to God I had no idea I was screaming her name in bed. But you can't just tear ten years of love for someone out of your life. No one can. This doesn't mean I don't love you. She sat down on the sofa in the living room and looked at him. Oh, I know you love me, Dan. I never doubted it. I just know that you don't love me enough. Sooner or later, our marriage will end as long as there are three people in our bed and two women in your heart. The longer I wait to leave you, the more painful it will be. And I'm not doing you any favors. You would either go back to Holly if she ever realized what an idiot she was, or you would find someone new, someone who wouldn't taint your memories of your life with Holly, and you could love her without any reservations. You're so wrong. Maybe, but that's exactly how I feel, and there's only one way to believe that you can forget her and start a new life with me. Anything you want, just name it, and I'll do it. She looked into his eyes and said, Then go to her and forgive her. Forgive her, and let it be true when you say you forgive her, and then you will come back and convince me that you have let go of all the hatred and pain you feel for her. Then I'll think about coming back to you. He stared at her, stunned, of all the things he could have expected to hear from her. Of course, I'll call her and talk to her. It won't be easy, but I want you to meet her face to face and tell her that you forgive her for cheating on you and having sex with other men, taking your home and your children and breaking your heart. And these cannot be just words. I will know this when you return to me. You've got to change your attitude, Dan, or we won't stand a chance, ever. He just stared at her until she stood up and then walked past him, opened the door, and walked out of his life. He stood there for about ten minutes before he entered the kitchen and began to eat the carbonara without tasting it. He should have forgiven the woman he loved blindly, not realizing that she had been tumbling around with other men before returning home to give him a warm, feminine kiss that probably had remnants of another man in it. He should have forgiven the woman who slept with other men while married to him before meeting the man she fell in love with. He had to forgive the woman who had traded ten years of intimate, casual, and familiar nights for a new life with a stranger. He had to forgive the woman who ruined his life and didn't even bother to tell him why he wasn't good enough for her, made him wonder every night what was wrong with him, that all that love wasn't enough to keep her. What was missing? What was missing from him? Why didn't Caroline just ask him to fly by flapping his wings? He would have just as many chances to do both. He struggled with it all weekend, taking seven-year-old Bob and almost nine-year-old Becky to the movies and bowling, because they had both just discovered the game thanks to Bill's love for the game. He winced when they first started talking about Holly's new husband and his interests. But kids are good judges of people, and they seemed to really like the guy, so he could put up with catering to Bill's interests. And he struggled with it for the next week after they went home. He couldn't bring himself to dial Holly's number, and when he picked up the kids that Saturday, he couldn't even look her in the eyes. The week turned into two weeks, and he had children again. He wasn't sure why she had turned into an almost human being, but all the decent things she had done seemed to have happened since she had met and married that Bill guy. Both kids asked both weekends where Caroline was. She had wormed her way into their hearts, and both weekends, when he had told them that they had had a little fight and that she was living with her mother for a while, had become palpably painful. They insisted on calling her, and she was willing to talk to them. Both children were crying but seemed to enjoy talking to her. Although they made it clear that she was willing to talk to him, he refused. He couldn't talk to her while her unsatisfied demand stood between them like an unexploded mine. Then a month passed, and one day as he sat outside her office in downtown Jacksonville, he saw her walking outside with blonde Frank. He saw the tall man lean down to kiss her on the lips and cup one breast so that it could not be seen by his colleagues 
walking out behind them. Dan saw her turn her face so that Frank's lips touched her cheek, but she allowed him to touch her breasts for a moment before freeing herself. While he was watching this scene, there was another little death inside him. He had no doubt that she had been honest with him and had not slept with Frank again, but Frank pursued her, there was no doubt about it, and little by little he laid claim to her. By the time it comes to divorce, she will fall into bed with him without any fight. Five weeks after their last conversation, a man showed up at Dan's insurance agency office at 10 a.m. with an official package. After he handed it to Dan and said, You've been served, he turned and walked out. Dan picked up the phone and told his staff that he would be gone for the rest of the day. He stopped in the darkness outside what you said to be his house and walked to the door. Although he was annoyed that he had to knock to enter the house he had bought and paid payments for ten years and poured his own suite into, he knocked. Bill opened the door. His hair was closer to black than dark brown, and he wore glasses on his large aquiline nose, but otherwise he was so close to Dan in appearance that he could have passed for his brother. Dan, he said calmly, I need to see Holly. A moment later, Holly stood slightly behind and to the side of her new husband. Dan realized that she had automatically taken Bill's hand. He didn't mean to, but looking at her hit him in the stomach as hard as ever. A curvaceous blonde with extravagant breasts and an ass that she was always tormented by thinking was too big, but which was simply magnificent. What do you want, Dan? I need to talk to you, Holly. If we are talking about alimony or visits with children, you need to either contact lawyers or talk on the phone. It's not about the children. I need to talk to you face to face. Now. Something in his tone made Bill take another step. Between them and Holly retreat. Bill raised his hand, palm up, as if to stop Dan as he approached his wife. This is not the place, buddy. This is our house. If there is something you are concerned about, let the lawyers do their job. Dan just stood there and looked at the man who looked so much like him until the man lowered his hand and looked at him, as if trying to read his thoughts. Holly stared at him with an expression Dan couldn't understand. He hoped it might be some trace of guilt and shame. Don't raise your fur. I'm not here for trouble. I just need to talk to mine. Ex-wife for a few minutes. About what? Holly asked shifting from foot to foot as if she was nervous, which she probably was. It was the most they had said to each other, without shouting, in the last year and a half. Not here, Holly. I need to talk to you alone. Somewhere else. Holly and her husband exchanged glances. Dan didn't need to be a telepath to understand what they were thinking. Don't be offended, Bill, but this is personal. Between me and the woman who was once my wife, this doesn't concern you. And I want to do it somewhere else, not here. This place has too many memories. Look, we got divorced almost two years ago. If I was going to hurt her, it would be when I hated her to the core. Or at least when I hated her a lot more. The pair exchanged another look, and he saw Holly shake her head. Holly, you know I won't hurt you. We were married for ten years. I am the father of your children. I loved you so much that it almost destroyed me when I lost you. Doesn't ten years and tiddly me to thirty minutes of your time? She looked at her husband, and Bill just looked at the floor. It was obvious that he was leaving the decision to hair. She clasped her hands to Gither and, without looking him straight in the eyes, said, We. All. Everything has finally worked out. The children got used to life in two new families. You seem happy with... Caroline. Why bother? Dan crossed the threshold of a house that would never belong to him again. This time she didn't back down, but Bill seemed to take a step to the side so that there was nothing between them. Finally, she looked into his eyes, and he thought it was the first time in two years that they had truly looked at each other. I'm not going to stir anything up, Holly. I'm not going to beg you to come back or call you names. I just need to talk to you. Tonight. It can't wait. I'll explain. But I want to do this when it's just the two of us. For God's sake, how could you do what you did to me? Take my children, destroy me, and not give me a few minutes. Then he turned to Bill. Holly knows me. She knows I won't do anything to her. She is the mother of my children. 
I just want to talk to her. At Shawnee's, a few blocks from here. We'll have our own conversation, but there will be people around if you're worried. They walked away a few steps and spoke quietly. Finally, she returned and stood in front of him so damn beautiful that it hurt Dan to look at her. Okay, Dan, go there. I'll be there in a couple of minutes, I promise. For a split second, he was overcome with an unbearable urge to laugh and ask if this promise meant as much to her as the promises she had made ten years ago to love and cherish him. But he stopped himself. Nothing good could come of it, and if he insulted her, it could ruin his last chance to win Caroline back. He left without saying another word. He was waiting at a table in the back of the restaurant when she walked in thirty minutes later. She seemed to slow down as she approached him, and he could tell she didn't want to be near him. Well, to hell with it, he thought. He would be uncomfortable as hell, so why should she be comfortable? She hesitated for a moment, then sat down opposite him. They were the only people in four booths in any direction. It was already 7.30 p.m. on a cold November night. They probably won't have too much to do at this time of night. A fat waitress with a wrinkled face approached their table, visibly wincing every time her feet touched the floor. It's a bad night for a walk, she said. What can I do for you guys? I'd like some coffee. You? Holly shook her head. Give her coffee with cream and sugar. It will keep you warm. You still take it that way, don't you, sweetie? He couldn't resist the last word, remembering all the nights they'd come to places like this, when he knew he'd be inside her before the night was over, and it hit him hard again. Why the hell did she leave him? A flash of irritation flashed across her face, but she blinked away the moisture and said, Do you still remember this? I remember a lot, Holly. There are many things I would like to forget, but I can't. She looked at the waitress and said, And a piece of cherry pie. He wanted to smile, but the memory hit him in the stomach again. She loved the cherry pie they served at Shawnee's, and he never minded it because, as she said, every ounce seemed to go straight to my chest. When the waitress left, she looked at the table for a minute, then met his gaze and said, What was so important that we had to meet like this? Talk. I can't be gone more than thirty minutes or Bill will come looking for me. Does this have anything to do with Caroline? The children told me that you live separately. He didn't realize he was going to say it until he heard her, and then he heard his own voice. I was served with divorce papers today. She may have been a truly great actress, but he thought Holly looked genuinely sad. Oh my God, Dan, I'm really sorry. The children love her very much, and they said you guys seem really close. What's happened? Dan, I'm truly sorry, but what does this have to do with me? Why did we need to meet so urgently? She left because of you. She just looked at him as if she didn't understand his words. What? How? She doesn't think we... She told me that I love you and that our marriage is a sham. This is madness. No, he said slowly, and finally looking at her, he lowered his guard. She was right. I was just never honest enough to admit it. She shook her head, as if not wanting to admit the truth, and said slowly, I didn't know. You should have known that. You can't hate someone as much as I hate you, if you don't love that much. And I still love you, just like the day I found out that you were sleeping with that asshole. He took a deep breath. He had to do this before his nerves gave way, and he broke down and ran away. I don't want to love you. I want to love Caroline. But you're still there, crowding out any other woman I could love. I want you to leave my heart. I want to be free. The sadness on her face only seemed to grow as his words sunk in. She told me what I had to do to save our marriage, and that's why I'm here. What? Why? I'm here to forgive you, Holly. She looked at him as if he was speaking some foreign language. What? I'm here to forgive you. She looked like she wanted to say something, but the words wouldn't come. I know what you did, but I'm tired of hating you and loving you. You betrayed me, ruined my life, and threw away my love for you like yesterday's trash. I want to think that you are a monster, a cheater, a complete bitch, but I know that you are not. Today I had a lot of time to think and remember. 
You love children too much to be a real monster. I never thought you were completely evil. That's why you hurt me so much. If you were just a rotten bitch and I made a terrible mistake by marrying you, I could forget you. Now there was a distinct mist in her eyes. But you are a decent person, except for your attitude towards me. You are a good daughter, a good mother, a good freen. The people at your real estate agency love you. I'm the only person you've ever treated like crap. I could never understand this. And I still don't know. But you had to have some good reason for what you did. Maybe I was never good enough in bed to keep you home. I didn't think so. But who knows? Hell, this is nothing unusual. If you weren't mine, if I didn't love you so much, I could accept the fact that marriages break up. People stopped loving each other. It's just different when it happens to you. The waitress came to the end of his words and seemed confused by what she heard. She left two coffees and a pie and hurried away. He took a sip of coffee. He concentrated for a few more seconds, then looked at her. There were tears in her eyes, but she didn't say a word. Anyway, Holly, I've decided to let go of the hatred. We will never be friends, but I will try to move on and forget you. I will always be there for you when it comes to children. And God, it's so hard. I hope that this guy, your new husband, Bill, I hope that he can give you what I couldn't. It was almost over, and he was alive. He wasn't sure his heart wouldn't stop beating at some point, but he survived. He took a deep breath, stood up, and left the booth. That's all, Holly. I just wanted to tell you this. Have a happy life. Before he could leave, she put her hand on his and it stopped him, as if he had been hit with a stun gun. This was the first touch in almost two years. Sit down, Dan. He was torn. Part of him wanted to run away from her, and the other half wanted to jump on her and tear off her clothes. The tears had stopped, but she looked as if she had returned from the funeral of her closest friend. I listened to you. Will you listen to me? I have something to tell you, and it will cause you even more pain than you already have. But you deserve the truth, and I hope this helps you move on. He couldn't help but think, Jesus Christ, you're going to hurt me even more than you already have. Is that even possible? But he slid back into the booth. He saw something on her face that he had not seen either on the day she told him she was kicking him out or in the days that followed. He couldn't say what it was, but something was moving underneath that strong, calm exterior. We never talked about this, but I should have. It wasn't good to leave things as they were, but that, that was part of our whole problem. He had no idea what she was talking about or what would happen next, but he knew that nothing good would come of it. She looked like she was taking deep breaths to gather the strength to plant the verbal bomb she was about to throw at him. Finally, she said it. You say you loved me and still love me. Here's the thing. I never loved you. Like that. Somehow she managed to look him in the eye. Never? He couldn't believe his ears. Even knowing what he now knew, he couldn't bring himself to believe it. Even at the very beginning? Now she finally looked away and looked at the table for a minute, but eventually looked up at him again. I liked you. I really liked you. You remember I was meeting with Dave and Bob when you came into the picture when we met at that Chamber of Commerce that Saturday night. He remembered. He was 26 years old and worked for another insurance agency until he gained enough experience to open his own. He came close to marriage twice, but nothing came of it and they separated before things got too serious. He was 26 years old, horny, and just wanted to see if he could get laid when he agreed to go to a Chamber of Commerce party at the Big Bell South Tower in downtown Jacksonville that Saturday night. He was good-looking and had great luck in nightclubs, so he decided that he might get lucky that night. But he never expected to see the vision that met his gaze as he stood with a group of other women near the cash bar. She was dressed in something sheer and light blue, and even through the fabric he could see that she was incredibly built. He always adored big breasts, and she had it. She wasn't too tall or short, just right. Blonde with good California surfer looks and a fantastic body, he caught the attention of the bartender, 
one of those college students who make money on the side at these types of events. Dan took out a $50 bill and put it in the guy's hand. She's yours if you tell me or find out what the blonde in blue with big breasts is drinking. The guy looked at the counter and smiled. A good man with taste. If I wasn't working, I would try to do it myself. I didn't wait on her, but let me ask a couple of guys. He returned a minute later and said, Rum and Coca-Cola with one cherry. Howie said he heard her say she wished she had a bunch of cherries, but they were all going up her ass. Dan grinned and handed him another $20. I noticed that your drink is dying, he said, standing in front of the blonde and between her and her two friends, who fell silent for a minute and scanned the crowd for walking penises. She looked at him in surprise and then saw the glass he was holding out to her. There was a blank expression on her face, and then a slow, delightful smile appeared. A dozen cherries swayed in the dark liquid. Sorry, but I thought I'd find out what you drink, and one of the bartenders told me that you like cherries, but they all go up your ass. A smile flashed. She was clearly trying to fight it. Sorry to say this, and I don't mean to get too personal, but with an ass like that, you could eat a bushel of these things, and it wouldn't hurt at all. She lowered her eyes and blushed for a moment, then raised them and began to look at him frankly, appraisingly, from head to toe. You went to all this trouble doing detective work just to buy me a drink? Why am I worth all this effort? I hope someday I can show you how glad I am to see you, Dan said, seeing something in her eyes that told him that he would get lucky very soon. He returned from the past with a painful feeling in his stomach. How can something so good turn out to be so bad? I liked Bob, the insurance agent I was dating, but I really loved Dave. Remember I told you how close we were to getting married and how I really loved him. But when he moved in with someone else, I was jealous. When I met you at that party, I was very excited. You were hot. And I loved the way we made love that first night after the party. I started dating you hot and strong to make Dave jealous. He became more and more interested in the girl he lived with. And so we met more and more often. And the more we met, the more I liked you. You were sweet and kind, and the sex was incredible. But then again, you know, I've always loved sex. And then one day Dave called me and said that he fell in love with her and was going to marry her. That's why I threw myself at you. It was fun. You treated me like a princess. No one has ever treated me like this. A few months later he married her. And then you remember those two weeks you had to spend in New York studying when you were preparing to open your own agency. So, one day Dave called me out of the blue and said that he had a fight with Mary, the girl he married. In fact, it was a conflict about me, and he came to my house. We ended up in bed. No excuses. You and I weren't married yet, but by that time we were already close. Or so you thought. But honestly to me, you were just a guy I dated because I was heartbroken. Long story short, I slept with Dave the entire two weeks you were gone. She met his gaze again. Then you came back, and Dave made peace with Mary. I had no reason to talk about what happened because I didn't see that I had done anything wrong. And then, a month later, I found out I was pregnant with Becky. When you found out about this, you said we should get married and wouldn't take no for an answer, although I tried to dissuade you. Remember, I tried to tell you that we don't need to get married. Having a child out of wedlock was no longer something terrible. But you were so excited and so happy, and Dave came back to Mary and told me that we were just having an affair, that Mary was the woman he was going to spend the rest of his life with. I didn't have a man that I loved, and I could tell that you loved me and you liked the idea of having a child and starting a family. So I told myself that we will have a good life together, even if I don't love you. Dan remembered those days and how happy he was when he learned that this gorgeous woman who lit up his bed every night would give birth to his child. The realization exploded in his head like a nuclear bomb. He knew why she wouldn't look him in the eye. Don't tell me. Don't tell me, your mother. When she raised her eyes, they were filled with tears. Yes, I checked her after birth. I never told you. I checked on Dave. 
He didn't want to do it, but I told him I would sue him and ask for child support for the next 18 years if he refused. But if he let me check on him, I would never tell you and you would think you were the father. And Dave was her biological father. Dan jumped to his feet, slid out of the booth, and tried to keep himself from hitting her. You're a bitch, you pathetic bitch. I really thought I could forgive you after everything you've done. I told myself that you can't hurt me anymore, but I was so wrong. You took my daughter from me, you damn bitch. And I'm sure Bob isn't mine either. Damn you! He walked past her, shaking off her hands when she tried to grab him, and ignoring her pleas to stop and listen to her. The cold night air was invigorating as he stepped outside. It was nice to be cold. He had lost his wife and children, and was about to lose his new wife. And at almost 40 years old, he would find himself more alone than he had ever been in his life. He got into his Mustang and turned the key in the ignition, preparing to drive out of the lot. Only a glance in the rearview mirror stopped him from killing his ex-wife. She stood behind the car, crossing her arms over her chest, as if provoking him to retreat. He rolled down the driver's side window. Get the hell away from my car, Holly. I swear to God I'll kill you. I'll come straight at you if you don't move your ass. I won't move. If you kill me, how will you even meet Bob and Becky? He opened the door and moved towards it, before he even knew what he was doing, leaving the car at neutral idle. If I have to, I'll knock you out and just throw your unconscious body somewhere far away. She flinched, but did not retreat. I know I hurt you, Dan, but I told you it would hurt. But trust me, come back with me and let me finish. I think you'll be glad you did. At least I hope you will. No matter what, you have to let me finish. If you want your Mary Eggs to Caroline to work, you need to hear this. How the hell do you tell me my kids aren't mine and then it'll probably get worse when I can't imagine what could be worse to help me save my marriage? He stopped in front of her and she reached out to take his hand. Please. He followed her back to Shawnee's, feeling the nervous glances of the waiters and manager on him. He wondered if they had called the police. It's okay. We're just... Uh, had a little quarrel. It's over now. When they sat back in the booth, she said so quietly that no one could hear. I said Dave was Becky's biological father. You are her father. She doesn't know, and Dave doesn't know. Nobody knows except you, me, and Bill. No one will ever know again. And when you stop suffering, you will understand that it doesn't matter. Do you love her less, knowing? He blinked and answered automatically. But is Bob mine? Yes. After we got married, I didn't have sex with anyone else. For years. You were a wonderful husband, but... But what? What did I do wrong, Holly? I thought our sex life was wonderful. Why did you need to look for something strange? She shook her head and reached for him again. He wanted to push her away, but this question had been tormenting him inside for two years, and he was ready to put up with her touches if she would at least once tell him the truth. I was involved in real estate. Every day I saw strange men. This meant that men harassed me every day. You know, I've always been catnip to guys. It's probably all about the chest and ass. And for a long time I tried to push them away, although I often came home all excited. But some of these guys, I liked them. I really liked them. They reminded me of you and don't tell me that if I had been married at the party that night, you wouldn't have hit on me and gone out of your way to sleep with me for the rest of the night. I know you too well. Okay, maybe I would do that. I was no saint. But why did you start? She took a deep breath and then let it out. The truth? Please because I didn't love you. We had a marriage, but a marriage of convenience. You have hot sex and two kids you love, and I have the same thing. I always thought you probably took a bite or two off when you said you were at work. I knew you loved children, but I told myself that you felt the same for me as I felt for you. You were in love with my breasts and ass. And why was it wrong? Yes, weren't you listening? I didn't love you. Sex with a stranger will not be betrayal or betrayal because it will just be good, clean pleasure. It wouldn't hurt me, and I was sure it wouldn't hurt you in the long run, but I still didn't do anything. After some time, I realized that I would never know what it was like to love a man again, at least not after Dave. I really didn't think you loved me so much, and I started to feel, perhaps, deprived. I knew that other wives, even our friends, loved their husbands. They joked with them, sometimes cheated on them, 
but they loved them. But I didn't have this. And then one day, a guy I knew in college came into the real estate office. He was great. He began to pester me, invited me to have lunch with him, and I agreed. A few lunches later, he came into my office and said that he wanted me to go to a motel with him after lunch. Just for a few hours. Just to scratch the itch we both had for years. I remember looking at him and being so excited that I was ready to scream. And then I looked at my desk and saw a picture of you and Becky and baby Bob on it. And then I realized it was like looking at a photo of the roommate I lived with. A hot and sexy roommate, but just a guy I lived with. And just for a second, I hated you. I wasn't the one who wanted to get married. You practically forced me into this. And now I was stuck with a guy I didn't really love. And to make matters worse, I couldn't have sex with anyone else. This dreamy guy I'd wanted for years. It's all your damn fault. That day I decided that if I didn't have a man I loved, then damn it, I would have as much sex as I wanted. And so I went to a motel with him and we had sex until we died. And that was it. As good as I thought. And when I returned home, I thought I would feel guilty. But I didn't. That night, we had sex. That was great, too. So I decided I could actually have my cake and eat it, too. Life was good. Dan tried to understand her words and found that he understood something, although he did not like it. But it didn't bother you at all that you lied to me for so many years? Oh, of course. After a while, it dawned on me. I knew I was lying to you and I decided that your pride would suffer if you found out that I slept with just anyone. I knew I was being selfish. I knew I was betraying you. I knew this from day one. But I knew that you loved children, and if we parted, you would lose them. And I tried never to deprive you of sex. We had a pretty good sex life, didn't we? So it was convenient being married to you, and I told myself that there are probably millions of marriages like ours in which people live well together but go out to worry. So... What happened? That's exactly what I expected, Dan. As long as it was a one-night stand, it wasn't hard to leave these guys. And I was careful. Condoms, and I chose guys who I was sure weren't hounds. But then, I started to really like some of these guys, and it turned into long-term relationships, and I started to develop feelings for some of them. Finally, I met Sam, and we dated for almost a year before I realized that I loved him. She loved him the same way she loved Dave so many years ago, and I didn't want to live without him, and without love in my life. I knew that sooner or later you would find out. I decided that the kindest thing I could do was tell you that I met someone else and get a divorce. I never wanted you to know about all my infidelities. She sat silently, and he could only look at her, trying to understand what she told him. Who are you? He finally asked. How could I live ten years and not have the slightest idea who you are? because I am a very good actress, and you loved me and didn't want to see that I didn't feel the same. But deep down, you must have felt that something was missing. Is not it? In the end, I told myself that when you leave, you will find someone who can love you. He shook his head. You were such a good actress, and I was so in love with you. I never guessed. She bowed her head to the table, and he couldn't believe it but she was crying. Oh God, I didn't want to hear that. I told myself that you should feel this. I never thought that you didn't realize this. In the end, he just shook his head in amazement and stood up. She answered his questions. He shouldn't have liked the answers, but she did. She reached out to grab his hand again. Please stay a little longer. How the hell could it be worse? After you left, you know I moved Sam into the house and it was fine for a few months. But he didn't really want children, even though he said they were fine. I saw this, and the passion between us cooled down. Six months later, we broke up, and I dated everyone until I met Bill. It was like with Dave. On the second night of our date, I realized he was different, and by the time we had been dating for a week, we had sex, and I knew I loved him. The funny thing, Dan, and I know you won't see anything funny in this, is what everyone told me, and I see it now, is that he could be your brother. He looks like you, about the same tall, slightly darker hair. He is serious, kind, calm, and loves me more than I deserve. When he saw your picture for the first time, he told me that he thought I was trying to replace you with a clone. Dan started to stand up again, but she held his hand tightly. 
a little bit more. He sat down again. Okay, you love your new husband. I'm happy for you, but what does this have to do with me? With us? Wait a few more minutes. Well, I fell in love with Bill, but I knew I had to tell him about us, about you and me and what happened. I didn't want to tell him. I didn't want him to know what a liar I was. But he had heard some stories about me from his friends, and I knew that he would learn the rest in time. I was afraid that he would think that I was cheating on him. I knew I had to be honest with him. That evening the children were with my parents and I told him. I was afraid that he would hear my story and leave me, but I told him everything. While I was telling him, I looked at his face and my heart sank. I immediately understood what he was thinking about. When I finished, he just sat and looked at me for a long, long time. Finally, he said, I would kill you if you did this to me. How could you do this to your husband? How can I even trust you? I sat and tried to find the answer to this question, and I finally told him the truth, that I never loved you, not for a minute, but I loved him. I really love him. I didn't try not to love you, I just never really did. After I said this, he just stared at me for several minutes. Then he stood up and said, I must leave you for a while and think about this. I will call you. I didn't hear from him for a whole week and died inside. I knew he would never come back. And then one day, he appeared at the door. He kissed me and said that he had thought about it for a long time and decided to leave. But I couldn't, he said. I was already in love with you. I know how Dan could love you so much, for so long, because I love you just the same. I think we are brothers not only in appearance. Then he told me that if we were going to stay together, I had to stop torturing you with the kids. Remember a year ago, I suddenly stopped all this Mickey Mouse nonsense and gave you permission to take them whenever you wanted, no matter how badly you spoke to me or talked to them about me. It was Bill. He said, I've already fooled you enough. I can't take your children away from you. She fell silent, and the two of them began to play with spoons. Dan drank his cold coffee and tried to understand what he was feeling. And when he returned, he asked how I would feel if he pretended to love me and had affairs on the side. It killed me, and he said, try to put yourself in Dan's shoes. And for the first time, for the first time, I realized what I had done to you. I stopped looking at everything from my side, just mine, and thought about what you must have felt, what you went through. I haven't spoken to you for six months. Bill did everything necessary to transfer the children. I know you must have thought I was a real bitch, but the truth is, I couldn't look at you and know what I did to you. If I said a word, I would burst into tears and could not stop. I started having panic attacks and the doctor recommended Valium. For three months I walked around like a zombie and Bill stood next to me. If he hadn't been there, I probably would have cut my wrists. I didn't think it was possible to feel pain and guilt and live like that. Her eyes were red from crying. Because the truth is, I know you never deserved this, Dan. It was my fault, my selfishness. I should never have married you. And after I did the first time, when I started cheating, I should have asked you for a divorce. It would be much kinder that way. She looked him straight in the eyes and said, I told you all this so that you understand the truth. You never had a wife like you thought. You never had the love you thought you wanted. It was all a lie or an illusion or a dream. It wasn't real. I would say you wasted 10 years of your life, but you have Becky and Bob. They are real and they love you. If you ignore everything else I said, remember this. I am their mother and I know their hearts. They love you more than anything in the world including me. You may hate me for what I did to you, but remember that I gave you these two. It looks like you finally found a woman who truly loves you. Don't leave her for someone, for something, that never really existed. He just sat there as she fell silent. He heard chatter in the kitchen in the distance, and outside, the sound of a lone car driving through the night. He felt like he was a million miles away from everything and tried to understand what he was feeling. It was the worst night of his life, worse than when Holly told him she loved another man and was leaving. 
In a way, even worse, because now he knew that he had never lost love. He was just comfortable, but still. He looked at these beautiful features that had been the center of his life for so long and tried to understand what had changed. It was like one of those optical illusions where a beautiful woman's face turns into a skull. She was Holly. She was still the beautiful woman he was courting. And yet, somehow this was not the case. He realized that it was like waking up from a dream. He could see the woman in front of him and remember the love and sex they shared. Or at least, he thought they shared. But somehow, the spell was broken. Her confession should have shocked him, should have destroyed the last shred of his masculinity. But he realized that this was not so. He remained the same person he always was. He loved this woman, enjoyed her body, and had two children with her. But somehow, somehow, there was no more pain. And then, as if the sun rose before his eyes, he realized the truth. It wasn't something he did or didn't do. It was like the old song. You can't make someone love you if they don't want you. She never loved him. They were just two people living in the same house, making two kids, having great sex. But she was right. They were roommates, with benefits. He took a deep breath, and it was like breathing in without the pain of a broken rib clawing at his heart for the first time in two years. He stood up, grabbed her hands, and pulled her out of the booth. He looked at her red lips and leaned down to kiss her. For just a few seconds, he allowed himself to savor her taste one last time. Thank you, Holly, he said sincerely. He walked out of the restaurant without looking back, and it was only when he turned around to leave the parking lot that he saw her through the window, hunched over the table. Her body shook, and just for a moment he wanted to stop, go inside, and comfort her. But he knew Bill would be there in a few minutes, and Bill was the one she needed right now. The next morning he woke up after the best night's sleep in two years. At noon, as Caroline was getting ready for lunch, he walked into the building that housed the mortgage company where Caroline worked. He took the elevator to the 11th floor, where her office was the last time he was here. Her office was not moved. As he walked past the secretary and her colleagues, he received several curious glances until he reached a door with the matte gold letters, Caroline Jenkins. He entered without knocking and was not surprised to see Frank next to her. She was sitting at the table, and he was leaning over her. Their faces were close to each other. They were looking through some papers. They looked up at the same time. Caroline turned pale, even though they weren't doing anything obviously wrong. Frank stood up to his full height, about four inches taller than Dan. He fidgeted as if he didn't know what to do with his huge fists. Dan, what are you talking about? Caroline began. I would like to talk to my wife. Frank glanced at Caroline, and when she made a slight movement of her head, he walked past Dan and out the door without saying a word. I haven't heard from you for five weeks, and yet you show up in my office without a word. Yesterday I received divorce papers. I... I told you what I was going to do. They shouldn't have been a surprise. I just never believed that you would actually do this. Just like I never truly believed that you would sleep with another man just to hurt me. She tried to glare at him, but ended up staring at the papers on her desk. I gave you a choice, she said stubbornly. After you cheated on me, you left me no choice. You never told me that I talk in my sleep. You never told me that I screamed her name inside you. I would do anything to keep you, but you never gave me that chance. She lifted her chin and looked at him challengingly. It was you who destroyed our marriage, not me. Don't try to blame it on me. And you hammered the nails into the coffin. But that doesn't matter anymore, Caroline. I understand that if it were the other way around, I would never have done to you what you did to me. I would leave you, but I wouldn't hurt you. It's funny, but in the last 24 hours I've realized that Holly, that selfish bitch, never really meant to hurt me. She did what she did for her own reasons, but not to hurt me. And you, my loving wife, did everything possible to destroy me. So who's the bitch here? She smiled bitterly. I should have guessed. You just couldn't do it. You still love her. Dan walked past her and stared out the corner window of her office. She had a magnificent view of the St. John's River, like a glittering ribbon of mercury meandering below. 
No, I did what you asked me to do, Caroline. I met her, we talked last night, and I forgave her. More importantly, I stopped loving her. Now I'm free. She looked at him, not believing her eyes. He realized that she never thought he could do this. She set an impossible goal for him. And having realized this, he realized more than ever that the decision he had made was the right one. Just like I stopped loving you. It's amazing how easy it is to do once you learn how. Like I said, I realized that I could never do to you what you did to me. And knowing this, I wondered why I fought so hard to keep a woman who could do this. He walked to the door of her office and stopped for a second. I'll sign the documents today and let everything take its course. We weren't married long enough to have any assets to divide, and we didn't have to pay any alimony anyway. I'll even talk to Holly about letting you see the kids. They fell in love with you, and if they want to see you, I don't mind. As for you and me, I think you have everything. If you need anything else, come and use your key while I'm gone. I don't want to see you or talk to you anymore. Now you don't have to wait to start entertaining, Frank. I bless you. As for me, I'm going to start searching. I fell in love twice. I think I have the strength to do it again. Going down in the elevator after his second great love, he thought that he expected it to be even more painful. But like he said, overcoming Holly taught him a good lesson. You can't torture yourself forever for the shitty things other people have done to you. This was enough to punish himself for his own sins. The knocking on his door started at seven in the evening. It had long since gotten dark, and he didn't wait for anyone else. So he let her knock until he heard the key click in the door and remembered that he hadn't changed the locks. He heard footsteps approaching. I called her and she told me what happened last night. You didn't trust me, did you? She came up behind him and put her hands on his shoulders. I didn't say you could touch me. But you didn't say I couldn't. Why aren't you with Frank? I gave you the perfect conditions. Because I don't want to pretend that I'm having fun anymore. I want real sex. And if you had good sex with Frank, you wouldn't be here, right? And then you can use your hand or a sex toy. I don't have sex with Caroline anymore. You used to like it. That was when I didn't see Frank in my head. This ruined everything for me. She lowered her arms, hugged him, and in one practiced motion, unbuckled his belt and pulled his pants down to his ankles. Then she reached out and slid her hand into his underwear. I didn't say you could do it. You didn't say I couldn't. And I think you like it. Why are you here, Caroline? You didn't want me to forget Holly. You were just looking for an excuse to divorce me and try yourself with guys like Frank. Why not be honest? We don't have to lie to each other anymore. We're done. She grabbed his hips and spun him around, and he left the pan on the stove and turned to face her, or at least the top of her head. He couldn't resist, and they had sex. When they finished, he looked at her and tried not to smile and said, You think this pathetic performance will allow you to return to my bed, my marriage, and my life? One sex? Oh no, I know that this is not enough. He pulled her towards him and kissed her. You know you caused me a lot of pain. I didn't think anyone could hurt me like this after Holly, but you did. I know that, Dan. I have no excuses except that I was in so much pain that I couldn't think straight. But I will try to make amends. I'll be the best wife and the best sex you've ever had. Better than Holly ever had. He grinned. You know it won't be easy for you. She punched him in the ribs. Bastard. Then the smile disappeared from her face and she turned and pressed her ass against him. I have to confess to you, I don't want to, Dan. But I think I have to if we're going to live the rest of our lives. What? You weren't dating Frank anymore, were you? No, I haven't, but we're still talking about Frank. He was 12 inches and you didn't want me to develop an inferiority complex? No, but... You were almost right when you said I wanted him and used Holly as an excuse. She felt him tense and pressed herself closer to him. He's so damn good looking, and the other girls in the office were talking about how good looking he was, that I thought about him sometimes. Just wondering, you know, how it will be. I would never do this, I assure you, but women fantasize too. 
And when I decided to leave you and decided that I would sleep with someone just to mess with your head, he was the first and only person I thought of. And when we... when we had sex, I enjoyed it, Dan. He didn't make me feel good, but he made me feel really, really good. And when he was inside me, and when he played with me, I could tell that he wanted me badly. He didn't just go through the motions. He said that he had been thinking about me for a long time, too. You have to understand. Before this, I slept with a man who talked about another woman. I slept with a man who screamed another woman's name during sex. And she has such huge breasts, and I can see the effect she has on guys. I must admit, next to her I felt like a skinny little girl. She turned to face him, and he saw tears in her eyes. I feel like such a brat, but I guess I was like that with him. The only thing I can say is that this will never happen again. As long as I have you, I will never need him or any other man. Do you believe me? Can you forgive me for wanting him so much? Crap. In some ways I regret hearing this. This makes it even worse. But since we're coming clean, I have to tell you that when I was talking to Holly, it was damn hard for me not to throw her on the booth table, pull her panties down, and possess her. I'm not in love with her anymore, but... She was fantastic sex. If she came crying and said she was breaking up with Bill and asked me to take her somewhere, honestly, I can't say what I would do. You know I love you, but I'm only human. And you too. He kissed her again and whispered in her ear. So, if that little red heed, who works in the office next to you and has such fantastic breasts ever comes to me again, like at that office party last June, you'll understand if I take her to one of the bedrooms and just play with her, and I swear to God, one morning you will wake up without your dignity. All clear? Transparent. He kissed her again. He would never tell her this, but he compared the kiss and lips to Holly's. No one would ever be in Holly's league, but Caroline was the woman he loved. She pressed herself close to him and said, I really never thought this would happen. I thought you were so in love with her that we could never be together again. I can never thank you enough for coming back to me. The only thing I can do is love you forever. My soul needs this. Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to the next one.